Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Music Lab Podcast. My name is Dog, and I am here with Mr. Church Rowe from Church and State. Welcome, my friend. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? We are in Louisiana, correct? I am. I am. Uh, right how, south of Lafayette. How hot is it today? Uh, quite. I went out to feed some animals and I came back, back in quite quickly. <laughs> I'm sure we're in the 90s. Uh, I know we've been hanging out there quite often lately. It is summer. Been, yeah, it's been pretty brutal I, uh, across yeah. the country. We we finally have gotten to the 90s here in Pennsylvania. But I, I even when we were down there, um, I mean, we got lucky with our weather when we were down there for the festival. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it was still like mid 80s and that was the end of April. So it's, it's sweaty no matter what. <laughs> any many month, it's, it could be sweaty. <laughs> so are you born and raised then or are you a transplant or tell us? No, your- uh, I'm born and raised. Uh, New Iberia is where I was born. Um, I moved to Abbeville. Uh, I was three, four, you know, before I can remember and uh, lived in Abbeville most of my life. A little community off the side of Abbeville called Mo. Um, not much happens here. Crawfish ponds, <laughs> you know, rice fields, sugar cane, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, born here, raised here all my life. So let's, I mean, that's a good segue then. So let's talk about how, how, you know, being brought up in, in this area or in your area, how, how did that, um, you know, influence you, you know, musically and with this album that, that you released? Yeah. Um, it's always a good question. Uh, how did the place I grew up influence me? <laughs> um, uh, there's a lot of festivals around here. I can say there's two ways I think I started experiencing music in South Louisiana. It's through festivals and it was through church. Um, uh, I grew up in church, so that was easy for me. Uh, I took to music pretty early. Uh, the church I went to, they were very cool about uh, young kids getting on stage and making a racket, you know, and not kicking them off too early. So uh, I cut a lot of my chops, you know, on church stages, you know, following. And I just so happen to be part of, uh, I think, a relatively progressive, musically progressive church. And uh, so we were able to write songs. And as I was a teenager growing up in that environment, I mean, that just spurred on songwriting for me. And of course, going to festivals, we have a festival for anything we can think of in South Louisiana or just Louisiana in general. Uh, There's a festival just about every weekend somewhere in some town, you know, and there's people dancing and, you know, just having a good time, you know, so the spirit of it, I think uh, that is kind of known throughout Louisiana may be the major influence. I think that Louisiana has done for me just to experience the energy of that music, you know? Yeah, and I, you definitely feel that energy uh, and that vibe in this album or in this EP. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you released the single, the lead single. I know what you said um, in October okay. last year, correct? Sounds about right. Yep. <laughs> and the reason for picking that as the single um, was there a method to the to the madness on that? Um, uh, not not particularly. Uh, that one, I just thought it was a good foot forward. You know, I had the other albums either um, mostly done, partly done, but I knew that one was kind of wrapped up. And uh, so I was like, that's a that's a good, solid starting point for um, just this new project, Church and State, you know, which is um, it's it started off with a couple different vibes in in my mind. Um, I just come off of um, another band, The Wanderers Drift. Uh, which we have music out there underneath that name. Uh, it's mostly like some garage rock two-piece type stuff. I know it's kind of got compared to White Stripes, Royal Blood type stuff. Uh, I guess there's not too many two-pieces you can compare to. So <laughs> that's the names we get tossed at. Uh, but coming out of there, um, I, I knew I wanted to do something a little bit larger, You know, definitely more broad in genre and all, because I am influenced by anything I can hear, whether it's something I... It may not even be something I enjoy, <laughs> but it can be influencing or inspiring in some kind of way. It's just, it's, uh, I think that's just the way I've always absorbed things as an artist. You know, take it, wash it, rinse it out, see what happens with it. Uh, and I think that's this album is probably a good example of that work of taking a lot of, a lot of inspirations, some that you know had nothing to do with being 
in a formed uh, genre of any sorts. You know, I think that's really what I was trying to hit on. Uh, I'm not too big of a fan of categorizations <laughs> and genres, as you could probably tell with that album, you know, and hopefully that's that's something I'm just trying to play around with. Uh, but Church and State, that album particularly, or this album, um, I got together with um, some local talent talented artists around here. Travis LeBlanc plays drums on a few of the tracks. Uh, Andrew Vo plays Fretless. Uh, Kyle Monso, uh, Moonshine Monso, you can see him around town. He does, um, I don't want to call it a, a rap bit, but it's more like to me, more of a spoken word. And that was the way I was trying to address it. Let's do some spoken word type stuff. And yeah, it's similar to rap, but only because it's got rhyme and meter to it. And um, who else is there? Oh, and Joshua Falk. Uh, he's a friend that had uh, moved out to Seattle. So we got to do this a little bit from afar. And that was that was kind of interesting. So um, and from here, Church and State, uh, we got um, well, we, we're a band now. Uh, Bryce Beard is our drummer and Jacob Rhymes is our keyboard player, both amazing musicians. So we've been kind of hitting the road and hitting some of the, the venues and trying to trying to solidify this. But right now, Church and State is definitely us three going forward, uh, writing new material, recording more stuff, you know, rinse and repeat. <laughs> um, so let's talk about that last track on the album that features Moon. Yeah. Yeah. When I first listened to it, I wasn't not that I wasn't ready for the rest of the album, <laughs> but when that track came on, you know, I honestly I wasn't ready for it. And mm -hmm. it took me a, a good three or four listens to really let it sink in and really appreciate like the mastery in this song. I mean, that is, yeah. His verses are so good. I mean, how you you know, you go from genre to genre just within the song, you know, within like each. Ver it's just. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about like the, how that came. How that out. happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was playing around with loops, samples, making my own. It's something I never really got a chance to do uh, in the other band. The other bands that I played in, we tried to do everything more organically, playing with the actual instruments. Uh, being I was playing around with that, I had my studio, I was getting everything set up. I just, one day I woke up with a discipline. I'm like, let me work on just samples, just things that either I create or I can pull, find, and create a piece. But just playing around, it wasn't really anything particular that I was after. Uh, but then I invited Monso here and he, in fact, it was for a different track. I have a, because I write poetry as well, and I was going to do uh, another type of soundscapes with another piece I had, and he just had, I think, a perfect voice for it. He's got a an authentic Cajun voice. And um, so I had him over here for that. We went through a few things. Um, I mean, I don't think anything really came of it. And uh, I was just showing him some of the stuff. Let me show you some of the stuff I'm working on. And he was like, yeah, you know, and he just looked at me in the middle of it. And he said, can I? can I freestyle on this? <laughs> and I was like, pause, you know, of course you can, can, you know, set up a few mics real quick, set them up. And I'm like, you're on, you know? And so you can hear him at the beginning, you know, how does this work? <laughs> you know? So it's very new. This is, it was just a one cut. And I, we, we talked about, do we leave some of the, I hate to even use the word fumbling of the vocals because it is truly freestyle. And I felt you can feel the authenticity, you know, whenever he is in that moment. And it doesn't doesn't seem to affect it in a negative way at all. So I thought it was appropriate. And uh, so once he did his thing, I was like, ah, I don't know what we have. And I know we have something. <laughs> so he left. And then, of course, I started tweaking the whole background to uh, make it all kind of come together and work. So it flow properly or best I could. You know, it's definitely a, a wild journey. <laughs> Yeah, it, that's a good way to describe the song. It's a journey. It really, it really is. Um, and yeah, be, despite having like, yeah, like you said, the different genres within the song and the 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 different rhythms and and how you syncopate it, it still flows. You know, so that's that's a yeah. real testament to, you know, how good. <laughs> good. The song Thank you. Thank you. That's that's important. That's important. You don't want it to be too jarring. That's for sure. Yeah, and you and for being a five minute song, it doesn't feel like five minutes. You know, it just it yeah. it it goes. The I felt like uh, as I 
I haven't listened to it <laughs> until this morning. You yeah. know, I was like, let me hear how it finally sounds through, you know, everything. And uh, yeah, for 23 minutes, 24 minutes, something like that. It's a pretty packed EP, album, whatever you like to call it. You know, it's all the Collection same. Collection of songs, right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, but that one definitely ends up in uh, a cluster <laughs> of musical genres and, and phrasings and all kinds of things yeah there's there's all kinds of things you can find in there to like or dislike i'm sure hopefully but to, like. your, but to your point you didn't want to be you don't want to be categorized you know as a specific genre and i mean that song epitomizes that <laughs> yeah and it's and it's not that i don't want to i just don't find it comfortable stating that the things that i'm hearing are genre related in any kind of fashion it's not really how i approach songwriting if it if it happens to be a genre, wonderful. That's I'm not against it, but uh, saying, you know, like I always had a problem with saying I write X, you know, indie, whatever, or alternative. Like, I don't know, know what that means because when a song comes, well, it's whatever it may be. <laughs> and I just have to kind of follow through best I can, you know. So let's talk about the songwriting process. It, are you more of a music first and then lyrics, or are you more lyrics first and then music? Oh, at this stage in my life, I think I've written them every which way. I mean, if there's only, in fact, I'm pretty um, attracted to writing them differently all the time. Um, and that probably shows too, you know, I mean, the approach to the song uh I, I mean as i've gotten older i can kind of take a step back and actually form a craft out of it you know i can say okay uh there are these lyrics or there is this song what are these song? what kind of lyrics are this song is this song representing you know or do i go juxtaposition with this song <laughs> you know and this odd I mean, so there's a lot of different ways i guess i would approach it i wouldn't say it's music or lyrics first um i, I think it's I think in my head, it's probably very chaotic, <laughs> you know, trying to piece, you know, like, oh, I bet you that would go good with this. And maybe that probably could swing into this one at the back end, you know, but um, at the end, it's also once you get all these ideas, whittling it down to to get the song uh, effective, you know, uh, you want an effective song. And sometimes like um, Drinking Social Anxiety Away, I think is probably my favorite song on the track on the uh, on the album. And I think it's because it's conceptually whole. It's, you know, there's uh, there's a concept there, warbly keys. Uh, I believe it was a djembe in the back kind of giving this almost tribal, ethereal type feel and groove through it. Um, and of course, the lyrics state very honestly what exactly I'm trying to get across. Uh, so I think in, in the end, that's probably what I'm after, the goal how I get to it is, yeah, that's, that's the fun part. That's any which way we get to it, you know? Um, but that one, I think if I have an ultimate goal, I think in songwriting, it's probably trying to create a full good concept start to finish where all things kind of point to the effectiveness of the, uh, the idea, maybe a little deep, but that's probably how it works. <laughs> yeah, no, that's completely fair. So, so yeah. on this day that you've released your debut EP, I mean, how did you sleep last night? Did you, what, what were you, you know, what, what were the thoughts going through your mind or, or is this kind of just, you know, oh, you know, whatever I've done this before. It's, you know, um, different this a time. little bit of both, a little bit of both. Uh, I have done it before and I did debate whether or not I wanted to do yard work today. <laughs> and my, my manager called this morning. She was like, you know, you should, you know, have a good day, you know, be happy about it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I probably should. <laughs> you know, it's an important day, but I guess in my mind, I've been done with it for a minute, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh, yay, everybody else finally gets to listen to it. So that's a good thing. And uh, just kind of responding and seeing some of the support with that. Uh, in my mind, I I'm already thinking about what we can do next. <laughs> you know, uh, back, yeah, I was already setting up microphones for drums, you know, and we've got other, got other songs that we're ready to, you know, start working on. Um, I do write a lot. So that's probably a, it's a blessing and a curse, I'm certain. I don't know if it's more of a curse than a blessing, but, you know, uh, got stuff to do. <laughs> so I'm happy it's out. Um, no party or anything like that today. You know, we're going to set up a uh, uh, a release party in the future, you know, but I uh, it came off, it came out 
relatively quicker than I expected it to. So, uh, I mean, I'm like, man, I'd rather music be out there than not. I don't like to sit on much, you know, and, uh, but I would like to gather some merch and stuff, you know, that, that people can maybe take home with them and get that. So we'll have a, a album release party, if you wish to call it that. So, so how has like the community like around you and like, you know, just e- even within B- Baton Rouge and as far as like New Orleans, how mm-hmm. does the local community treat, you know, musicians around your area? Um, I, I mean, among musicians, I think it's pretty great. You know, I mean, whatever, if there's any kind of qualms, it's nothing that's worth worrying about. <laughs> you know, uh, the musicians, I think, are highly supportive of each other, you know, and those who work kind of close to the industry. I mean, we're, we we all know each other by name. It's not as though it's a... Uh, when something happens, a lot of times we'll know we're all on each other's social media accounts. So it's a pretty tight knit area down here, uh, especially with musicians. And I mean, I just know them most because <laughs> I'm with them all the time. Uh, but yeah, no, there's it doesn't matter where it's a venue or or Walmart. We usually will hug each other and, you know, talk about what we're doing and where, where we're playing next. So um, I think they're highly supportive. They come out, um, you know, they they share things on social media. I mean, it's all the things you would expect friends, you know, and family to do. So I think Lafayette's a good spot, you know, when it comes to that kind of a thing. Yeah. I found that, I mean, you know, Zach Edwards in the medicine, the debtors, you, I mean, there's a lot of talent in just yeah. in Lafayette. I mean, let alone in Louisiana. And then, you know, yeah. like our, our friends in, um, Oh my gosh, I've lost my oh, deep sleep Atlantic in, in New Orleans um speaking of a two-piece uh right those guys are really good as well so i mean a lot of great music coming out of this state no doubt no doubt and a lot of different genre i know lafayette louisiana or south louisiana gets known for the cajun culture and sure yeah but that's not nearly (laughs) all that's down here you know uh like i said i'm born and raised here i don't I think it'd be hard to find Zodico on the album I just released. <laughs> you know, I'm not, not going to deny that it may be there somewhere. I didn't see it. I didn't hear it, <laughs> you know, but uh, it's just not the all that gets played down here. There's a lot of unique talent as well as French culture, you know, that's going on here. Uh, I, that's what I love to be able to point a finger at most. And I, I think also because I, I, I didn't. I didn't necessarily grow up with a lot of the French music influences. So uh, I grew up with a dad who listened to classic rock, you know, I mean, I'm like, yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a Led Zeppelin baby, (laughs) you know, like I like that. And of course I grew up in the nineties. So I'm like, you know, you got classic rock and grunge is like, yeah, well, I lived to pretty, to live through two pretty good music eras, you know, and, and, so, but that was my more of my influence in my realm. It wasn't necessarily in the French music. I just wasn't um, introduced to anybody who played a lot of French music at the time. Otherwise, it probably would. Um, but I think there's a lot of people like myself around here who, well, we didn't necessarily learn the French way. We learned all kinds of different ways. It's the internet age, so we were we're just like anybody. You know, we we're, I'm downloading. Uh, I loved when piracy. <laughs> So I was out. I mean, I, oh yeah, you know, I need MP3s of every place, you know, like I never even heard of these, like, even though they play line water. Place. <laughs> yeah, right now, I don't care what it causes, like, any of it, you know, like if it, if it worked, I want a link, you know, but, um, so I think, yeah, musically influences, it's, it's, this it's, it's, it's odd. And I think I've noticed it around with other bands. We have a deep center gravitational pull towards i think that french culture center uh but we've all looked outwards with the internet <laughs> you know and so now we're having you know these cool uh i guess mixed smashed type genres that we have and it's kind of interesting uh, I'm, I'm thinking kind of excited for the progressiveness of the french cajun music culture see where it takes off um but there's a lot of genres down here you know Definitely, definitely. Yeah, that's all I want to point on. So I, I, I do want to talk about, and, and since you you were in a band previously, what, what do you feel like in this day and age is the biggest struggle as a musician? <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah, uh, point blank. I think money. Um, uh, I, and I don't know how it is in, in other cities. There, there may be um, 
just more funds available <laughs> to the musicians, the artists who do that. Uh, down here in Louisiana, it's pretty poor. Uh, and so when it comes to musicians, most musicians are going to be poor. We work jobs, um, whether it's a couple part times or full time, you know, uh, it's almost it's nearly impossible to make it on a full time musician unless you're starting to travel elsewhere. So I think the biggest struggle Louisiana will have will be funding the talent that it has, uh, which to me can be kind of sad one we'll all we, we go work offshore <laughs> you know that's the going thing we do we become farmers uh we try to make a living and kind of just play music you know when we can for festival fun times and you know backyard parties uh or you got to really bite down and start looking elsewhere and you know and touring and coming back home and whatnot so i think that's honestly the biggest part which probably goes without saying but that is the biggest part outside of that i mean we have a massive amount of talent we have uh definitely a number of places to play you know that there is always something if not two or three things going on at any, any given night you know uh and even if you don't have that you can go to open mics um well segue to regarding open mics this first song i have on that album uh i wrote um let's say about November last year. And what had happened is I was visiting open mics. I'm always a big proponent of open mics. I just, I think everybody should cut their chops there. You know, it should, it's really? an awesome community if you can find a good one. Yep. And uh, and I ended up in at Blue Moon Saloons um, in Lafayette and they have an amazing open mic. Uh, so I got involved in that one. Uh, and out of that came regarding open mics. So it specifically meant for that place that time you know and kind of almost a thanks also for giving me a stage to walk up to and you don't know me <laughs> you don't know me from anybody you know but uh i can plug in just like anybody and try something you know so we have a lot of those stages a lot of opportunities i think here um trying to keep the musicians uh roofed <laughs> and homed properly and fed is probably, you know, obviously the bigger of the issues, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure how that works in a lot of the other cities, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Biggest problem. That's it. Well, so speaking of support, talk about um, the, is it, and I, I might be fudging the, the word, uh, is it Acadiana, the Acadiana group? Don't Acadiana, they? Acadiana, Acadiana. Yeah. Just how, how do they, how are they involved with like the musicians around the area? Well, that is exactly who I'm talking about. It's not, when oh, I say okay. Lafayette, I think Lafayette's more of just a hub now of Acadiana. Okay. You know, a lot of us just look towards it because it is the largest of the population. Um, but they're all the same. Uh, so if I'm talking about Lafayette, in my mind, I'm still talking about guys in Crowley. You know, we have Rain, Brobridge, all the surrounding areas. That is Acadiana. Um, and we're all doing, everybody's supporting everybody. Um but uh, again, Acadiana is not necessarily the most rich monetarily <laughs> place in, in the United States or, or wherever. Um, and most of the money tends to come from offshore medical field, um, which is a very specific thing. And they don't necessarily go out, you know, at bars at night and hang out, listen to music. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I I mean, like a one-two punch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, it's, it's, so it's, it's a little bit difficult uh, just to make a living. Um, but it's one of those things where when you have a lot of struggles, a lot of music comes out of it too. So it's, I don't know if it's par for the course, you know, for us to rough it out a bit. That's what blues is all about, you know. It's it's feeling it, getting drugged through the, <laughs> through the coals well, and yeah, and coming out with, yeah, I got a song to sing, <laughs> you know, and that's a winner. Oddly enough, struggle does tend to make really good music, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I do feel like that is probably the one theme, though, that is consistent through this EP. There is definitely a bluesy, almost, I don't want to say Delta bluesy, but there are moments where it sounds Delta bluesy. But overall, I feel like the the blues theme is is throughout is that fair to say 
Oh, I would think so. I think blues is in my veins. I don't think I could get rid of it if even if I tried, <laughs> you know, uh, it's odd. I never really grew up listening to a lot of blues, but we're I'm surrounded by it. So it's not as though you could not hear it. You know, I mean, uh, every writer around here knows Stevie Ray Vaughan. <laughs> we, it's all in our veins. You know, we know these guys. We know B.B. King. We know that note, you know, that he plays. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, and so I think, yeah, that that. I think that blues culture is just saturated in our in our bones and in our blood. I don't know if that's it would ever be uh, wrung out of me. You know, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can't uh, you can't like cover band you with a top 40 or no, <laughs> no backstreet boys. Or... <laughs> no. <laughs> so let's I do want to I, you you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. So talk about, you know, being a family man, trying to balance your work and life, you know, that's that has to be difficult. I know how yeah. difficult it is for me. So, you know, talk about how it is for you. Yeah. Um, well, um, family is typically first. <laughs> it has to be. Otherwise, uh, I don't even think I could do music on my own if it wasn't for the support of my family. So, yeah, that's a huge thing. Uh, balancing that is also huge i think it comes pretty easy to me i'm pretty good about you know if um uh, if i think something's gonna stress me out <laughs> you know just like oh, i don't think i'm gonna do that in my life <laughs> you know and and walking away from it you know so i think that helps you know uh not get in not try not to bite off more than you can chew type so you don't take it out on your family type stuff um i i did i did work for 23 years as a uh, foundation repair specialist. And I was the only one in Louisiana, so I had a kind of a very specific job. You know, it just came up with some odd little things. So, uh, running that, helping that company out, run that company, you know, that that actually pulled me away a lot more than music has been pulling me away. Right. So, in a weird way, uh, losing a bit of my work <laughs> allowed more of a life balance that way. <laughs> it's kind of flipped around. Cause, you know starving musicians and all <laughs> but um uh yeah so i did have that uh i raised my kids you know i have two kids 17 and 22 21 she'll forgive me for it um uh but yeah she's around we all hang out we go out and we go to the shows together uh so we love that and so part of my work is now part of my life and that's a pretty good balance you know i hate to say you know if you find a thing you love you never work you know yeah it's it's getting there so as long as i can find the pay <laughs> we'll be all right with it but uh no bringing everybody out uh is a big part i think of keeping that work life balance you know and uh as long as they enjoy coming out and and whatnot but we've taken we've gone on hiking trips and we're pretty close you know we we've 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 we're pretty tight-knit in this family yeah that's good to hear I, anytime that you hear that it's it's always refreshing because it's yeah there's too many times where that's not the case it's so. not no yeah uh, i didn't come necessarily from a, a great you know together home so yeah. it may be a kickback on that but um yeah work-life balance is pretty important uh but I, I think we do pretty well on on this end yeah, yeah. So I got to ask you, so if you had the chance to open up for any of your idols musically, who, who, and alive or dead, who, who alive would, or dead? Yeah. Who would it, who would it be? Oh my God. That's so hard. We'll make it alive then. Well, yeah, we'll, okay. make it really well um, I'm going to say the first person to come to mind. Um, I don't think I would ever be able to do it. Prince. Nice. <laughs> I, I doubt I would succeed. <laughs> and opening up successfully for him but he's be the first person to come to mind because um yeah i don't know I, I appreciate him as a as a as an artist the artist he was as the the way he approached his songwriting uh he's kind of a uh do-it-yourselfer from start to finish and that's kind of the way i am as well so i can uh just honestly just to be on stage with him and maybe just to hopefully talk to him after <laughs> If I can get past the shyness would be nice, you know, yeah. I mean, rest in peace and all, but uh, that would probably be what I'd be most interested in. Like, how do you go about the background stuff? You know, stage is fine. That's fun. I mean, it's, uh, but I, I still love studio stuff, you know, and, and of course I just released the album today. So my mind is still 
in yeah. studio mode, you know, and I'm like, how do you do that? Oh, oh maybe next album, I'm going to try this, <laughs> you know, uh, but I think I think that would probably be one. I'm sure I could think of a handful of other ones who are live right now. For me, alive or dead, it's it would be Bob Marley. Um, just because of of like just because the impact that he had, not just as a musician, but culturally and being a black man in the 70s, like it just I'd, it's unbelievable to me that I'd to be ready to finish my set so I could listen to to Bob Marley. You know what I mean? I'd be like, okay. Are we done now? We can be done now. I mean, Marley's next. <laughs> like, y'all don't want me. <laughs> you know? Oh, absolutely. That's the same thing with Phil Lot Prince. I'm like, y'all not here for me. Like, I just gonna yeah. finish playing and I'm out, you know. And thank you. I'm just glad to be here. You're like, this this fucker better only be playing a half hour. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like I could feel him like he needs the stage now. <laughs> well, church, this has been great. I I yeah. wish you the best of luck with this album. So uh, tell me, yeah, so I know you said about doing uh, the album release party or, you know, an album release mm -hmm. in the future. Any other dates lined up or any other yeah, albums um, we can see you this summer? Yes. Um, we we have a few shows lined up. Uh, we're definitely planning on putting more together. Um, I think the first next one we have up is July 27th at Loose Caboose. Uh, I think we're talking about going back up to Huckleberry and Alexandria. So we're kind of hovering around Lafayette right now, just, you know, picking um. Uh, where you know hey they give us a stage and an outlet i'm game for it you know um so yeah we've been playing mostly around lafayette in louisiana but we really want to see what kind of a tour we can kind of put on and branch out more you know i i, I love louisiana but I've, I've been here for 40 plus years so <laughs> you know i have no problems going to see the rest of the world and and bringing some music out to them you know but that's that's kind of i think part of the plans going forward um and of course recording more you know i mean now with this this three-piece band that we have uh it's 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 quite it's quite unique uh everybody comes from a very vast um database of music <laughs> that they you know from influences uh and so that's creating a lot of unique unique experiences you know to say the least well yeah i just wish you nothing but the best for on this journey um making new music this album is is great it's really really good you should be Thank proud you. of it um yeah so ladies and gentlemen check church and state out on the road listen to the album overflow or ep whatever you want to call it <laughs> collection of songs whatever you like <laughs> <laughs> uh Make sure to like uh, and follow all of his social media pages, as yeah. well as ours. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to your YouTube channel. Do all that stuff to support us, support him. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. Thank this you. Been, I've been Dog. You've been great. This <laughs> is the Music Lab Podcast.